Uh, so I'm going to start with the amazing part of this presentation. This is not going to take too long because I believe you guys are going to probably uh, be looking at the um, specific of, of the uh, uh, white paper. Uh, but I'm here highlighting the most important findings that we got for uh, from this white paper. And I have to say, you know, uh, we have one person in our team that was uh, just dedicated to put together these white papers, whereas Cameron Tight, uh, thank you, Cameron, for putting together all this. So I'm going to start with the presentation here. So there you go. We are excited to sharing presentation. Uh, there you go, Mexico in the spotlight. Uh, so initially, what I'm going to say about Mexico, probably all of you know already uh, that this is a very important um, part of the e economy uh, in our region. Uh, but the analysis that the ecosystem in Mexico uh, recognized that the country is still, uh, you know, a lot of uh, work in progress. Um, the country is, uh, you know, basically going into a transformation, uh, the uh, 4.0 industry. Uh, and there is a lot of optimism uh, towards the progress that has been made uh, in the positive uh, consumer spending trends that will continue transforming the country. So there is a substantial program, uh, progress in all of this. So I will, you know, uh, you some information about the here the white paper what is what you are going to see so uh in this part you know we are uh basically in the white paper what you are going to find is the new trends tech sectors and the recommendations that we are going to give uh for everyone that is coming apart uh you know that want to know a little bit more about mexico so this white paper i believe it contains around 20 21 pages that you are going to find very key information not just about the uh you know the ecosystem of the education government you know language and economy uh, so for those of you that may be unfamiliar with those basic information about the country, is the first part of the YP. So now, uh, one thing that we need to talk about is what Mexico offers, you know, what they are putting on the table. And one of the things that they have uh, for so many of you may be uh, or no, uh, I will surprise if not, if not that Mexico, you know, is just uh, uh, you know close in the region. They are they are actually considered part of North America. So may um, some people actually think that they are considered Central America or or maybe uh, you know of course it's Latin America, but um, few people actually know that they are part of North America, and that's why you know we have this strong uh, FDA agreement between Canada, um, USA, and Mexico. So Mexico is also an open economy. Uh, they, and again, they have uh, like a free trade agreements. Of course, the most important agreement probably is the one that we have between our countries, that it was the replacement of NAFTA, which is currently also, oh, this is a very difficult uh, you know, word for me to say. Uh, but this uh, trade agreement, of course, is the most important, but it's also important to realize that Mexico has agreements with over 46 countries. In between them, I think for the audience, it's going to be very interesting to know that Mexico is also a part of the Pacific Alliance, which is uh, the other economic bloc that in Latin America is, uh, is probably competing with Brazil in terms of population and GDP. Uh, is very accessing uh, to a big part of the population in Latin America. And also all those four countries uh, that are a part of the Pacific Alliance have free trade agreements with Canada in particular. So that's why Mexico is super important for us. It's super important for uh, any negotiations that you're going to, uh, going to have uh, for, uh, forward. And now one interesting fact about Mexico and what is uh, offering here is the manufacturing infrastru infrastructure, which, uh, you know, currently I believe is one of the strongest points uh, for those companies that are located in Ontario, knowing that Ontario is the manufacturing hub 
uh, in the country. So you will find a lot of synergies in between uh, the manufacturing sector in Mexico as well in, in Ontario in particular. So you, if you have a startup that you know is moving in between those areas, I believe you are going to find uh, you know a lot of business potential in what is the manufacturing sector and technology business. Uh, so the other part is about intellectual property. Maybe uh, many startups, uh, in particular in Canada, are very concerned about intellectual property, especially when they are uh, expanding into other countries, uh, knowing, for example, experience uh, for those that have been expanding, for example, in China and have very uh, challenging times uh, in regards of intellectual property. Well, Mexico has a strong legal protection for intellectual property rights, uh, um, which uh, is helping actually to protect the company, uh, company patents or copyrights. So this is something that, you know, will help your company uh, going forward. And one exciting thing is that, you know, you will find uh, different programs from the Canadian government that are actually helping you to protect your intellectual property when you are uh, doing business with a foreign company or when you are having a partner in another country. Uh, so we are going to talk about that after the presentation, but uh, certainly there are some grants around that you should be considering when you are actually open business uh, in, uh, in Mexico, you know, and if you are concerned about intellectual property, this will be protected. And the other part, uh, the, fa the fifth point here is about the adoption of technology. So uh, Mex Mexico has a trending, uh, you know, in getting more adoption, uh, more, of, uh, more of the population is right now using technology for different reasons. I believe this is uh, basically a trend in uh, many countries due to the pandemic. So you will see more and more people actually uh, going towards um, uh, adoption in technology. So I'm going to talk about indicators, but before that, you know, it's important also to know, uh, you know, that Mexico GDP has been growing uh, or is expecting to grow in uh, 2021 and 2022. Be besides that, you know, in 2020, of course, as many other economies got a big hit uh, uh, for uh, the pandemic. But I just wanted to say that part of the indicators that you're going to see in our white paper is also providing some uh, kind of uh, you know overview of how the country has been dealing uh, you know the economic indicate indicators during the pandemic. Uh, so you will see, for example, that you know uh, is is important that five percent of the GDP growth is estimated uh, for 2021 um, uh, by the IMNT. Uh, uh, after, uh, you know, a minus 8.2 GDP growth that was reported for 2020. Uh, so as many other countries, you know, GDP has been, uh, you know, affected uh, during the pandemic, but uh, it's expected to be recovered. So, which is a great news. And it's also great news that Mexico is one of the countries that is expected to grow the most uh, in Latin America and compared with other countries that have been highly affected as well uh, during the pandemic. So one important consideration also uh, that we saw in between the, uh, the, the report is that, uh, you know, 80, uh, 84, uh, 121 USD and GDP per capita was reported by the end of 2020 and is expected to raise significantly in 2021. And um, the, the point here about the 1.86% uh, uh, of the global GDP is regarding that, uh, you know, the um, UA, the the Mexico GDP is reported to uh, be representing that, you know, in the, in, so it's important to know that, you know, this is a big economy, it is, uh, is providing, you know, a strong uh, uh, way back after the, the pandemic. So 4.4% uh, is basically what we are putting here as the unemployment rate uh, through the first quarter of 2021. Uh, it, this has been an increase also uh, from the end of 2020. Uh, is the higher is higher than 2019 at this point. And 40.2% uh, uh, is the consumer confidence for the first half of 2020 which is a hit record low in uh, from April uh, 2020 and has been climbing uh, since then. So 
you will see that in our white paper, you are going to find uh, many other indicators that may help you to understand what is the situation right now in Mexico. I'm just naming here a few. Um, so you guys, uh, maybe depending on the uh, company or the type of sector that you're moving on, you will find some of them more interesting than others. So going forward, the startup ecosystem in Mexico, and uh, this is one of the uh, parts that I really love about, you know, speaking about Mexico. So the startup ecosystem uh, has been steadily uh, growing over the past uh, 10 years. Uh, during this time, uh, Mexico has crowned uh, two unicorns uh, that have been evaluated over $1 billion. And, uh, you know, it, the amount uh, of deals that were completed by investors and, you know, funding in startups was increased by 600%. This is a huge amount of money right now in, into startups. So, uh, you know, in general, over the last five years, investment in Mexico has 560 percent um but you know com in completing you know the uh, the deals is in the number of companies that are in early stage is more in companies that have been already raised in mexico it's important also know that the startup ecosystem in mexico is not just located in mexico city and this is a trend that we also highlight in 2019 and some other white papers we have done for the mexico ecosystem if you are considering really to go to mexico you should consider mexico city guadalajara and monterrey uh, those cities are extremely important uh, for uh, the startup ecosystem and they bring their own personality and their own type of startups is the same way when you are talking about Canada and you are thinking about Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal in general. So, so just don't think about Mexico City, although of course Mexico City is uh, putting together uh, a lot of uh, you know startups as well. So, uh, you know, statistics in regards of what is the Mexico tech ecosystem so far. So, to talk about you know some general indicators that you also to see our one white paper so it's important that we have, uh right now you know thanks to the information that was provided by our partners you have 230 uh venture capital deals that were closed in mexico all through 2020 okay and 220 yeah uh, and compared to 226 in 2019 uh so we have 1.2 billion dollars uh, US dollar invested in into the Mexican startups over uh, 2020 and I believe that is going to be probably increasing in 2021 we still don't have the uh, you know the number but the trend is going up so 29 percent of the venture capital raised in Latin America was actually raised in Mexico and this is also important to know many startups from the region actually moved to Mexico in order to raise capital. And uh, um, especially those that are located in the Pacific Alliance countries that, again, those are Colombia, Peru, Chile, you know, some startups from these countries, they may open second headquarters or they may move headquarters to Mexico in order to raise capital. Uh, 18 uh, venture capital exits, uh, exits. Uh, uh, took place actually in Mexico all through uh, 2020, which is also a cool number to see in the trends. Uh, so far, um, Mexico has three uh, three companies uh, considered unicorn level, so they have a valuation over $1 billion. And to have an idea, I believe at this point we have in Latin America 11 or 12 unicorns considered that yesterday or just this week, uh, you know, one a company in Chile was, uh, you know, getting that level as well. So I believe it's 11 to 12 uh, companies that have raised, uh, you know, that level of, uh, of investment in the region. So when we talk about the 78% of survival, survival uh, rate uh, for BC back companies, this is a survival rate that is considered in the last five years. And again, you can go through the document and you will see some other numbers that may be uh, important for you as a company to be, uh, you know, considered into what is the uh, startup ecosystem. 
But okay, so going forward, we're going to talk about, uh, you know, each of the key tech sectors that may be important for you. Like uh, if you are in between these tech sectors, if you have a startup in these tech sectors, we totally encourage you to actually consider Mexico to enter uh, as a, a, you know, as an expansion, expansion process. So FinTech, e-commerce, IoT, and AgTech. Uh, so those that are in the agricultural technology, internet of things, e-commerce, and financial sector in technology, those are the trends uh, that continue growing in the uh, startup ecosystem. Now, if you've seen our FinTech, IoT, AgTech, so this is still is the, uh, you know, continuous growing, but e-commerce kind of came in a play. And the reason why is, again, the pandemic kind of changed on that part. Like, there are more people actually uh, buying things through uh, e-commerce services. So I'm going, I'm going to start talking about fintech and realizing that, you know, it's estimated that at this point, for, uh, 441 fintech startups are in operations in Mexico. And um, the, it, this has been a competition, you know, in the region between Mexico and Brazil, who has the most fintech startups. And it seems like uh, fintech startups that have been uh, raising up money and uh, growing in the ecosystem. Uh, the mortality rate also has dropped uh, in between fintech startups to 4.5%. Uh, 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 so in compared with 11.3% uh, from uh, 2019. And, you know, the, the challenging part for the startups in the startup ecosystem and in the fintech part is that uh, there is a lot of uh, venture capital in this sector that is uh, continuing to trend for investment to be focused primarily in uh, proven startups. So this is no different from uh, maybe what happens here in Canada or happens in other countries where investors just trust those that already, uh, you know, have some kind of traction or they have raised already capital. So it may be a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, the trend going in that way, you know, especially during the pandemic. I believe uh, I hear many investors, they, they want to keep backing up, you know, startups that, are, of course, are making money. That's, that's the point uh, of investment in companies for many investors. So in, uh, in one of the important points in fintech is also that it has been an increase in venture capital investment. Uh, so uh, more than this, $1.7 billion across 123 startups, uh, so the, or 123 deals. So that's double, uh, that, that has doubled from um, 2018, for example. So, and, and this is a number that we took uh, from 2019. Uh, it's important to know that, uh, you know, um, we are getting uh, very new numbers, uh, you know, during the pandemic, as much as we can, as you can imagine, it has been kind of difficult to collect all these numbers together. But this is uh, these are the most uh, uh, new numbers that we can get, new data that we can get for you. So uh, it's also important that uh, knowing that around 40 million people in Mexico, uh, that is all, almost the third part of the population, are unbanked. Uh, so that means that, you know, people are not having access to bank services. So the reason why, you know, many of the startups that are raising up uh, right now are giving solutions for those type of people that cannot actually ac access banking. So if you are in that area, you know, if your fintech company is in that area, perhaps you have a room to actually grow in a market like Me Mexico. Now, talking about e-commerce, uh, I started with the introduction saying that, you know, e-commerce is kind of raising up uh, during the pandemic. Uh, one important thing that we saw is that at this point, Mexico is the 17th largest e-commerce market in the world. And this was a number from 2020. Uh, so it actually experienced an accelerated growth uh, from 2018. And um, you can imagine that this uh, probably is going to continue happening in the next uh, years. So one thing that we wanted to uh, kind of uh, highlight is the segmented distrib distribution in e-commerce. What is really, uh, you know, what people are really paying attention to buying right now. So uh, in e-commerce uh, popping up, electronics, media, 
is the largest segment in Mexico for uh, around 20, 31% of the e-commerce revenue. And then you have uh, fashion with 24% uh, and toys, hobby, and DIY uh, with 18%, which is amazing DIY, but okay. Um, so in mobile, uh, it's important also for you guys to know that still there are many people that are accessing to this information through laptops or desktops. Uh, I know there is, a, you know, a trend is still going into smartphones, but in Mexico, it's still there are many people that are shopping online uh, through, uh, you know, a more like a traditional device than the smartphones. So in that comparison, like laptops represent 59%, uh, while smartphones represent 38% so far, and tablets just 2%. So you can see there how people are accessing to e-commerce, uh, you know, and, and buying through e-commerce. Um, so the online penetration in Mexico also has increased uh, to, uh, you know, a good percent, but it's still there is a big part of the population that, uh, you know, is not accessing to the best uh, type of internet, and that's more like a, in rural areas. Now, we go to uh, another sector, which is the IoT sector. And the IoT sector uh, is pretty much in trend, has been always in trend, and has been, has been always, uh, you know, related to the manufacturing sector. And this is where I believe, uh, you know, for companies in Ontario, this is going to be significant, uh, you know, to understand how IoT is increasing in, in this particular country. So. By 2023, IoT devices in Mexico are expected to almost double uh, from 133 million in 2020 to 247 million. That is increasing in Internet of Things in Mexico. Uh, so the IoT integration is mostly found in Mexico uh, in, in primary industry, you know, uh, either in manufacturing, transportation, and utilities. Uh, so nearly every industry uh, has ways to incorporate IoT technology uh, in between. Um, right now, we have uh, about 54 uh, Mexican startups in the IoT se sector that has been actually raised uh, funding as well in, in, the, um, in this sector in particular. So the main concerns about IoT is in regards of the, um, uh, you know, in the, in the organization looking to integrate IoT system into the systems that were, uh, you know, related with security risk or data protection and privacy. Uh, as an incubator accelerator in the startup ecosystem here in Toronto, and we've seen a lot of startups from Latin America, I have to say that this is always a, a very big concern because we in, in the region we don't uh, we don't perceive uh, security risk and data protection necessary as strong as in uh, Canada USA market. So the growth projections. So the market is currently uh, worth three billion uh, US dollars and it's trending up uh, from one point three billion. Mobile is, is uh, you know, Mexico uh, is the second largest the car market, uh, will be the second largest connected uh, car market by 2023. So, this is extremely important, uh, you know, it's extremely important for uh, this automotive uh, space. So, uh, you know, since Ontario again is very strong in this area, I believe there is a lot of uh, there are a lot of synergies in this particular part. And finally, I'm moving to the agricultural technology, uh, which is ACTEC. And then, uh, you know, as probably many of you know, uh, the ACTEC sector, uh, you know, Mexico has a very, uh, very strong agricultural sector that generates around $49 uh, billion per year. Uh, and is considered the um, top 10 uh, food production markets in the world. So it's an important, very important sector that is also using a lot of technology. Uh, they are facing different challenges in, in between of them uh, related with climate change, you know, uh, the growing of global population, raising food prices and uh, shrinking agricultural land base. So Mexico transitions toward agricultural innovation is very crucial 
uh, to the industry's uh, success. So, uh, of course, the um, one of the challenges I believe that Mexico has and is represented also in the white paper is the competition that they have with Argentina and Brazil, which are two countries that are still way ahead or not way ahead, but uh, enough ahead uh, from Mexico in this particular area. So um, the agricultural industry in Mexico has a long standing record of the best the nation, so that's why are here in the white paper. Uh, so you will have uh, to actually look at the specific numbers regarding the GDP in this area, you know, um, and also how many companies are actually raising money in this area and are actually adopting technology to do better uh, because they, they really want to compete not just in the region but in the uh, world uh, scenario since, uh, you know, this important market. Uh, now, I'm going to the end of the presentation here for what are the challenges and resources that you can get uh, from uh, either us or the Canadian market and, and also, you know, like uh, every single move that you are going to do as a startup, if you are expanding in Mexico, you are expanding in India or China, you are always going to get challenges. Um, and I know for most startups, uh, you know, uh, knowing, for example, that uh, you are going to a new country with, uh, you know, a different language. It's kind of disencouraged sometimes because people can be a little bit, uh, you know, um, uh, concerned about how I to know uh, that, you know, there is a good part of the population that actually, especially in Mexico City and Guadalajara, Monterrey, that actually has a very good English level. And you will always have the trade commissioner service uh, from Canada helping uh, you know, in any steps that you're going forward, for us, it has been amazing. So, um, just consider your points, so don't, you, you don't go through these challenges so far. Uh, so, uh, trusting uh, connections, you know, so, uh, of course, uh, talking with the Trade Commissioner Office, if you feel like our uh, community is always a trust community, then you can talk with us as well. We have different connections in Latin America. We always provide different type of resources for Canadian companies as much as we can. Uh, we don't provide consulting, uh, but we can, you know, certainly guide companies in some way that, uh, you know, they, they find their, uh, their path and enter into certain markets. So uh, the most important part for companies is to have the right connection. And you have a bad connection then, uh, you know, is when, uh, you know, companies get disencouraged. There is all, always also some concerns about government tax uh, and permits, um, you know, some inform, uh, information about corruption uh, culture and, you know, uh, trade cost as well. All of these are uh, problems that are happening always in emerging or developing markets sometimes. So the best way you can do is to, again, try to trust, uh, you know, some government uh, uh, contacts or, you know, organizations like us. There are too many other organizations that can help you to go through this without too having too much pain. I wouldn't say that you are not going to have any pain, but not too much pain. Um, and also, you know, uh, understanding that collaborating with locals is important. So if you have like a local sales uh, person or local partner, it will do your uh, life much easier. And, and, and there is other point regarding the personal touch, uh, you know, it's important to know that, uh, you know, companies um, in Latin America or business in Latin America is, is pretty much a combination of just uh, not just business, but also personal uh, matters. So, um, yeah, so knowing all those kind of things and knowing the cultural business behavior is important. I know it's important for our companies in um, uh, to everyone for uh, you know being here for this particular presentation, I would like to announce that uh, you know we have actually a new program coming up, and that's the Canadian uh, Tech uh, Expansion Program, and this program is going to happen in November when we are going to have a boot camp. Uh, you know, for Canadian companies entering um, Mexico and Latin America in general, we are divided the bootcamp in two parts, Pacific Alliance and Brazil. 
Uh, so if companies are interested on that, if Canadian companies are interested on that, then uh, you know you can go to our website. In between the programs, you are going to find information on the application process.